Okay, six reasons why you should not divorce if you're married. And I'm talking about man and a woman, not man and a man or a woman and a woman. I'm talking about a man and a woman. That is the only legitimate marriage, okay? And I first want to say that uh, when it comes to marriage, it's God's creation. It is God's institution. It is the, uh, God is the originator of marriage. So we should never, never take it lightly. We should always take it seriously because God takes marriage seriously. I just want to make that preference, all right? Okay, let's, let's get into this. Because my purpose of bringing this is we all to learn and grow. Okay, I've been married 39 years. There's still um, much needs for improvement. 39 years, and there's still uh, 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 needs for improvement. Okay, so I don't claim to be in you know, saying that everything is all hunky-dory because with marriage, it is around-the-clock work. It is everyday work. So I just want to make that preference, all right? Okay. Okay, again, six reasons not to divorce. <clears throat> so now here's a brief look at some biblical reasons to advocate for staying in marriage, all right? Number one, and not and not in any, any specific order, but I will make this specifically number one, and that is marriage is sacred. Marriage is seen as a sacred union. And with that being said, let's turn to Matthew 19 and 6. Matthew 19 and 6. <clears throat> And this is Jesus um, speaking. No, I, no I'll, I'll push it back to verse four. It says, haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Verse 7, why then, they ask, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Verse 8, Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not this way from the beginning. Verse 9 says, I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another woman commits adultery. So, <clears throat> again, marriage is a sacred thing. Uh, you know what? Look, look at it this way. When you join together in marriage, and you made those vows. You not only made it to your spouse, but you made it to God himself. You made a promise to God. That is something, again, that should be, um, that should be taken seriously, not lightly. And too many people today take it too, too lightly, especially when you look at the Hollywood crowd. You know, they look at it as some get together, Oh, I, I don't feel the the emotion anymore. I don't feel the love anymore. And then they get a divorce. And then these so-called uh, no-fault divorces or, or irreconcilable differences. Come on, what is that? What is that? It's something that they made up. It has, it's not biblical, that's for sure. So let's keep it moving. Number two, love. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 
1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verses 4 through 7. Verses 4 through 7. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Okay? So another reason not to divorce is love. Uh, too many marriages end because it's seen as a quick fix. When, again, and I have to preface this when, when you first meet someone, make sure, you make absolutely sure it, this is a person that you want to spend the rest of your days with. Make absolutely sure you basically check them out from head to toe. I'm, and what I mean by that is know their background, know their faults, know their weaknesses, know what makes them happy, know what makes them sad. And they should do the same with you. You should be um, exploring every aspect emotionally and mentally. And know, leave sex out of it. Leave sex out of it because what that'll do is, and I know, I, and I know, you know, me saying that is like telling Stevie Wonder to, to drive on the interstate. People are not gonna listen. People are gonna go, you know, there too many, including Christians, we're too caught up in the ways of the world. In the ways of the, how the world wants to do things instead of how God wants to do things. We're too caught up in it. Especially when I, when I say um, stay away from premarital sex. Don't do it. You know, and even if you have, and I know the majority of you have, because I, you know, I was that way myself before getting married, but still... There is no, you know, now is the time. The time is now. You're in the moment, in the present. Make a change. Make a commitment. If you're in a relationship with someone, get serious about it. Get serious about it. <clears throat> because you stay in a marriage It takes a lifetime to build. It really does. I've been ma been married 39 years. It takes a lifetime. Things change. People change. But the thing is, that commitment that you made does not change. That commitment that you made to God does not change. It doesn't change. And like when I first read, except for um, infidelity, adultery, so forth, you know, um, and again, uh, and I, I and I think it, 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 I think this would fit in there also. This is my saying. I not it doesn't say specifically in the Bible, but it does fall in the realm of, of um, how you treat someone. And I'm talking about physical abuse. Now, if we're talking about sexual abuse, whereas, again, th this is just my, my take. Okay, just my take. When it comes to um, physical abuse, where the, the, if um, a spouse is being beat on horrifically or even a little bit just being beat on, you know, I'll I just leave that up to you and God. Okay, I'll just leave that up to you and God. Right. Okay. Uh, number three, forgiveness. Let's go to Colossians 3.13. Colossians 3.13. And like I said, I hope you get something out of this. I really do. I hope I'm you get something out sure of this. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. <laughs> My electronic Bible. No. No. I think this will be what, Alexa? Oh, I said her name. Oh, anyway. 
they it you know what I'm you know you know if you you have anything like I don't even want to say the name and get it get her alerted so I'm not gonna say it, but you know what I'm talking about sometimes you could be speaking and all of a sudden they they start talking this is one of those situations anyway where was I um Colossians 3:13 okay Colossians 3:13 and it says bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone forgive as the Lord forgave you And all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. But the key word here, key phrase here is forgive as the Lord forgave you. So that is, excuse me, one of the reasons not to divorce is sometimes we can, it could be a situation of infidelity. It could be a situation of, uh, you've been done wrong. Uh, and, it, and it may seem like, you know, it's an unforgivable thing. And sometimes it doesn't even take that much. Sometimes it could be something very petty. And yet somebody wants to go ahead and get a divorce because it's something very petty. And we really, really need to get away from that. But forgiveness, we it ha, forgiveness has to be in the mix. Forgiveness opens doors. Forgiveness heals. And remember also, again, God forgives us. God forgave us. So why? See, what, what, see here's the thing. He is the blueprint for how we are to be. He's the blueprint. And if we can't follow his blueprint, then really there's no hope for us. <clears throat> but um, but because of forgiveness, God forgives and is long-suffering just as we should be. We should be long-suffering. Even though you may go on, you be going through the trials and tribulations with your spouse, and you know, and you know what I'm talking about, you know. You know what I'm talking about. If you, even, hey, even if you've been married a, a year, you know there, there's, there's those ups and downs. Even with a year, I know some people, you know, with years, is nothing but bliss. Ah, I'm seeing a lot of couples here lately, even with, with one year under their belt, you know, they've already hit bumps in the road. <clears throat> Number four, support. Let's go to Proverbs 18, 22. Proverbs 18 and 22. Proverbs, where are you at? Proverbs 18, 22. 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 Proverbs 18 and 22. All right. It says, he who finds a wife finds, excuse me. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. He who finds a, a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. And all the women said, <laughs> amen. <laughs> but you know what? It, it, and especially looking around, seeing other people, it, especially these days, a good wife is hard to find. A good wife is hard to find. And that's why I, 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 you know, look around. Mm -mm. You finally come to your senses as a man, as an adult. You see what you have. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Even though, oh my goodness, we go through our ups and downs, but I'm blessed. I am truly blessed. She is a woman's woman. She is a virtuous woman. When it comes to God, she is a very godly woman. Very godly woman. So I'm blessed and she knows how to cook. She cleans. She's very clean. She is the most cleanest person you'll ever meet. Without a doubt, the most cleanest person you will ever meet. <laughs> I kid you not. But, um, you know, 
going through this life, we need that support. We need that that best friend, really. That's that's not only being a wife, not only being a husband or whatever, you know, being a spouse, but being that best friend. We need that. So when you look at situations, and again, many times people go, we go through the motions or more or less we look at other couples and we say, How can't why can't we have that? Well, see, the thing is, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And if you do see them at the at an apex of their marriage, again, you don't know what's going been going on behind closed doors, and you don't see you haven't seen for what they have had to go through to get to that point. Okay, and then there'd be other situations where people just be fronting on you, people just front running. They put up a facade to make it look good, but behind closed doors, again, it's, it's, another, it's another story, okay? So we have to keep that in perspective. Instead of, what's that term, um, the grass is green on, on the other side? Look at your own grass. Um, keep your feet pressed to your own lawn. Take care of your own lawn. Cut your own grass. Stop looking at your neighbors because you... You may have a better situation. You may, your situation, you may be thinking that your situation is in dire straits. You may have a better situation than what's going on over there. You ever stop to think about that? Just put that nugget in your head. Okay. Number five, children's well being, stability for a child. You know, <clears throat> And this is where we really, really have to see the world has been saying you got to you got to have your your compassion, your love for yourself. You got to live your life now. That's what the world's been saying, and it's been turning people around, you know, making lives up um, turn upside down. Because when we get together and marry. It's not about me anymore. It's about my spouse. It's about the children. Now you have a you have, you got a family. You got it's 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 not about you anymore. You have to take yourself out of the equation. Take yourself out of the equation because the world will mess you up and the world has messed up many people. And when I say the world, the world being um, Satan led, the devil, devil led. Anything outside of God's will, anything outside of God's um, saying, anything outside of God's way. And it is so heartbreaking when couples break up and you've got children in the mix. And then many times, and I've read many times and heard many times where the child will blame themselves for the breakup of a family, for, for the breakup of, of, a, of a marriage. That's, that's troubling and that's heartbreaking. It really is that they will put that burden on themselves. But it happens. It happens. And we shouldn't do that to them. When we get a divorce, and I'm, again, outside of adultery where, and even in those situations, you know, you still have to be open to forgiveness. <clears throat> and um, I don't know, it just when it, when it comes to your children, we still have to be those examples. That's why I hate the fact when people get together and have kids and they're not married and then they go off, see somebody else and it's, it's, it's just like a domino effect. You're really hurting your children. And finally, the financial strain. You know, the term is it's cheaper to keep her. And, and that's that's <laughs> that that bowls so true. It's cheaper to keep her. And in these days, things can be flipped around. It's cheaper to keep him. But it's such a, a financial burden, a financial strain. You've already 
what spent many years together building up a nest egg, building up funds, and then have it just all be taken away, thrown away. So <clears throat> I'm leaving it right there. Six reasons not to get a divorce. Keep it biblical. Keep God at first. I hope you learn from this I, because whatever I tell you, I'm saying it right back to myself. And heeding those words, especially I have my Bible right here in here, God's words. But um, renew your minds. Continue to renew your mind. I've said.